Hey guys, what is up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com here today with Josh from Aviation 101. And Josh is gonna tell yeah. us all about how he became a private pilot, how much time it took, how much money it took, and all the steps he went through to become a pilot. All right, guys, today we are at Oshkosh, so pardon the noise, but this is an amazing aviation gathering and a perfect spot to talk about how Josh became a private pilot. So at what point in your life did you decide you wanted to fly airplanes? It was pretty early on. I mean, my dad has always been a private pilot ever since I've been around. He got his private back in 1979. Oshkosh! That's one of my dad's favorite warbirds, by the way, B-25 Billy Mitchell. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> So my dad got his private in 1979, and he started. He was flying a Cherokee. He got his license. He bought a 172 in '83. Yep. More Oshkosh. So my dad's pr a private pilot. He got a certificate back in about 1979 and started flying. He was flying a Cherokee at the time. He bought a 172 in 1983. Owned it until about '99, and I was super young when they sold it. The yep. Austin airport was closing. It was moving. It was getting expensive, etc. Yeah. Life happened. Right. So they sold the 172, and I had very faint memories of flying in it with him. Uh, and then after that, I just kind of found myself asking him questions all the time. Like, yeah. like, what about this? What about that? And then of course I develop an interest in, you know, flight sim and it, it's, it's the only way a young person yeah. can really get their foot in the door. Yeah. So as time went on and I started to get old enough, my parents, which I'm very fortunate enough to have parents that are super supportive and, yeah. they, and they were like, you know what you want to do. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's, you know, we want to help you make it happen. So my parents yeah. are pretty much how I got through my private. Awesome. Uh, At what age was it that you started actually taking that step from flight sim into flight training? I took my first Discovery flight when I was 14. Okay. Um, which is kind of like impractically young. It's yeah. like, what are you going to do at that point? Uh, but I, I got into it and that was like a confirmation that I love this. Yeah. I love it and I want to do it. So from there, took another intro flight when I was 15 and then just kind of started flying every couple of weeks. Yeah which is pretty good for because for a couple reasons. A, a young person can absorb information yep. in, over long intervals. So that, yep. that worked. And two, it kind of kept the cost down. Yeah. Fly twice a month. You don't need to be yeah. flying several times a week. Yeah, five, 600 bucks a month. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that was when I was 15, got to about 16 years old, solo. Yep. So I soloed for a whole, f f whole year. Yeah. <laughs> I so soloed for a whole year, kept flying, doing my long cross countries, my solo cross countries, all this stuff. And then finally came time about my 17th birthday. I was in yeah. uh, high school theater at the time. I was a technician, I was not on stage. <laughs> and yeah. uh, there was like, my birthday was like right around the time of the musical. So I was like super busy with operating the, the soundboard for the show and everything. Yeah. So I think it was like three months after my 17th birthday, I went yeah. and took the check ride and it was such a cool experience. And yeah. my, my dad, like my dad and I were like both kind of in tears after I got my private. Yeah. Uh, because he's the reason I did it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's super cool. I mean, always super cool to be able to share aviation within the family. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I am truly fortunate because a lot of people don't get to fly with their fathers, don't get to fly with their mothers, whomever yeah. it was that got them in, into it. A lot of times by the time they start flying, you know, perhaps that relative is deceased yeah. or, or they just don't fly anymore. My mom's still scared to fly with me. Um, yes. Probably for good reason though. Um, either way. Perhaps. So <laughs> about 15 to 17 then, right? That's about Fif two years. 15 to 17, yeah. Yeah, two, two and a half years, zero to private pilot. Right. And that was spread out, you know, over that time, you know, a few lessons here and there, which but, is totally doable. So I had an excess of time. I had way more yeah. time than what's required. Yep. Um, what but was your total hours when you got your private? 85 hours. 85 hours. Like 85.2, something what like that. What would you estimate the total cost to be? I would say it probably landed in somewhere around 10,000, 10, yeah. something something like that. Yep. Um, just judging by the cost of the airplanes was actually yep. significantly below average uh, mm -hmm. for the area. But I did fly more. Yeah. So I got a lot more flight time in yeah, before the check ride. Yeah, hours, more than you needed, but right. I mean, spread out over the time. So it cost a little bit more, could have been done cheaper. But I mean, you got to fly when you're 15 and 16 and have that experience, which is awesome. Exactly. Um, yeah, when all your friends are driving, you're flying airplanes. That's pretty yeah. much right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like as soon as I, I, I'm pretty sure I soloed before the driver's test. Yeah, <laughs> that is so. awesome. Yeah, so 
What um, when you say it was kind of below average cost renting the airplanes, did, did you find like any tricks to find cheaper aircraft or? Not really. So it, I mean, it all depends on on where you go. Your local area. Your local yeah. area, exactly. Yeah. And the particular place I went to, above and beyond aviation in Austin, I, I knew the instructor for a long time. I knew a lot of people that went there. Yep. And the air, he just had really good rates on the airplanes. Yep. Because his it, all, a bunch of things, he had a good contract with the FBO there, so he got cheap tie down. He also had good rates with the mechanics because yeah. he's known them for decades. Yeah. Stuff like that. Fuel prices. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right, and I, and I think a good way to, to find lower cost airplanes is find a flight school, maybe not necessarily a chain flight school, but find a flight school that's well established. Yeah. And and you're, you're, you'll probably find some yeah, good stuff. Yeah, and it totally minimizes frustrations too when you find that well established flight school. New ones can be great, new CFIs can be great, but well established right. places, they have a good reputation for a reason, they've, and they weathered the storm, so to speak. Exactly. It can be hard to make money in flight instruction, and if they've been around a while, they run a good business. Precisely. And you don't want somebody, you know, when you're halfway through training, to all of a sudden close the doors because they opened up and then six months later they were closed. And I've and I've come across a lot of students yeah. that have come to me and need some patchwork because something like that happened exactly, to them. Exactly, yeah. Or a CFI bailed on them in the middle of training, et yeah. cetera. So it's good to find somewhere that's well-established just like you said, they've, they've weathered the storm. That's Absolutely, a good way to put yeah. it, and and that's yeah. that's great. I give a flight school two thousand dollars in cash and to rent an airplane to work my commercial, and two weeks later they didn't have the airplane anymore, and they didn't have the cash either. It was gone. Um, that's not a story. good flight school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that happens. Um, it does. You have to be yeah using somebody with a good reputation. Definitely really key. What would you say the hardest part about flight training was going through that time span? Motivation. I yeah. think is, well, is a big deal. at that age, for sure. Well, it, it, exactly. There's lots and lots of distractions. I think at any age, but particularly at a young age, yep. it can, other stuff can distract you away from it. But just finding the motivation to keep yourself going, particularly through the times where you're kind of tripping over yourself. Yeah. And you're, you're like, there's this thing called a learning plateau. As, yeah. You know, as a CFI, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. you know, anybody out there knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. You're, you're learning, 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 and then you just like, whoop. Level yeah, off. And you, no matter what you do, you can't really learn anymore because you just have to take a step back for a minute. It's like it's like you hit a and, ceiling. Yeah. You right. really hit the ceiling, and that's that's it. There's nothing you can do other than take a step back and try right. to reset and maybe approach it from a different angle later on. Reset, or or I think it's it's a lot of it's up to the CFI in yeah. particular to kind of help you. You know, when you hit a challenge like that, like motivation, you're getting the students getting frustrated, they feel like quitting. Yeah. That's the worst. And you've got to you got to show them, you know, suggest things to them that maybe they didn't think of. Hey, yeah. maybe, Try flying with another CFI. Here, yeah. go fly with my buddy Seems and see. Somebody explains it to you a little different. Yeah, absolutely. Or you know, yeah. maybe, maybe like on that topic, we're not clicking and, and yeah. it, I'm not explaining it right or something. Do you think that it was like touch and goes or cross from landings or there was there anything specific that was really challenging? <laughs> where you just felt like I don't think it was yeah. anything in particular. I do remember a, a specific time during training where not necessarily one thing on the flight was bad the whole yeah. flight was bad yeah you know and, I think and that happens I've had some of those it, yeah. it, it, it absolutely happens it'll happen at no matter no matter what yeah. experience level you're at so it's when you find yourself in times of those it's important to remember that you're human yeah <laughs> some students like like they expect perfection from themselves and i yeah don't get me wrong i do too but it's just not realistic. It's not realistic. It's gonna be like, hey, good and bad. Hey, yeah. you you botched that landing. I watched you grease three others before. Yeah. You're having a bad evening. Just take a break, come back to you. And like you said, sometimes even flying with a different CFI. Yeah. You know, and just hearing it. It different does wonders. Way, yeah, it really does wonders for sure. I mean, there's no such thing as the world's best CFI. It's no. just no one's gonna work the best for everybody. And sometimes you need a mix of one or two or three flight instructors to get you through training. Right, exactly. Um, so Going through all that, what would you say would be your recommendation to somebody who wants to get through cheap and quick? I mean, everyone wants to get through fast and mm -hmm. you know for the least amount of money possible. Right. What's the best way? What would you have done different to cut down on cost or? So, when I was younger, yep. I was a lot. I was really stubborn when it came to reading. Yep. I, I, it was just hard for me to sit down and read a book. Mm -hmm. You know, unless it was something I truly was interested in. Now yep. it's totally different. Like I read for fun. Yeah. But. That was a challenge when I was younger. I just wasn't into reading. Mm -hmm. Had I been more into reading, and I, I think you know, I think a lot of people would kind of share this sentiment. If you if you'll just pick up the pilot's handbook of aeronautical knowledge, download it free on the FAA website. Yeah. Download the PDF and just read it. Yeah. Start reading stuff. Absorb the knowledge. Absorb anything in the pilot uh, the. Uh, the flying handbook, yep. instrument flying handbook, anything yep. like that. Those a are all. A lot of stuff's out there for free. Those a are all. Those are all yeah. free government documents. Yeah. You can download them, or you can order the paperback. Read that stuff. 
-hmm. And whenever somebody comes to me and says, well, hey, I'm 15 years old and I want to get into flying, but yeah. I, you know, I can't afford it yet, or my parents don't want me to start yeah. yet, or this or that, I always send them Amazon links to those books. Yep. And then I'll also give them the links to the books on the FAA. Yep. I'll say you can download them for free here, or if you want a hardcover, yeah. here. Definitely. Read these cover to cover. The more you study beforehand, the smoother everything goes. Because when, so what I always say when I'm kind of talking about instruction and flight instruction and whatnot, the airplane's not a classroom. It's yeah. a tool. Yeah. It's a learning tool. The airplane is perhaps the worst place to teach somebody a new concept or introduce <laughs> them to a new concept. It's loud, kind of scary sometimes. Very intimidating. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a new in environment. In your brain, it's funny. As soon as you turn that key and that engine starts running, half your brain power is gone. It's instantly. It, Especially yeah. when you're getting all this all this stimuli thrown at you yeah. that's new to you. Totally. So it really helps to have that information. Kind of you pour pour the concrete, make the foundation yeah. first. Get in the airplane, then go do the stuff. And mm -hmm. once you're in the airplane, maybe there was a concept that you didn't really understand in ground school or something. You're gonna see it in the airplane and be like, now I understand why. Yeah. I understand why we set the altimeter to this blah blah exactly. blah or, or yeah. whatever it may be. So absolutely, I think that's a very good point. People mm -hmm. need to learn as much as they can before they start because totally. once you start. First of all, the clock's ticking. It's expensive to learn with the engine running in an airplane. It's very, very expensive, expensive to learn with that yeah. Hobbs meter ticking. So definitely learn as much as you can beforehand. Mm -hmm. And and while you're in the airplane, the other thing is that it's just, it's so hard yeah. to learn. Mm -hmm. when, when you've got all these distractions, you've got all these intimidating things and you're like, you're trying to flare the airplane and your instructor's yeah. like talking about something about barometric pressure and you're like, ah, ground, yeah. you know. You don't hear anything. It, right, yeah. it goes in one ear, out the other. I've seen it a million times. Yeah. Learn as much as you can outside the airplane before you, even before you start spending a dime. Yeah, absolutely. One start. of my favorite things to do with students, actually, engine off, because there's that comfort factor of mm -hmm. being able to hear and see and learn in the airplane, which you have to learn something in the airplane, but sure. learning as much outside is best. Sure. Favorite thing to do with the engine off, master switch off, making sure the hot meter's not running, sit in the airplane, get comfortable in that seat, get comfortable with there, where everything's at, mm -hmm. and just be relaxed in there rather than you know, as soon as that engine fires up, the, it's like the, the veins there's the death grip. There's, there's the death <laughs> yeah. grip. That's right. So get used to sitting in there, get used to being relaxed, touching the controls, moving things around, touching buttons. And I mean, heck, go read the P hack, the, go read the AFM. Sitting in the airplane, the flight school's not going to charge you to sit in there and just Hopefully. get used to it. Hopefully. Yeah, good Hopefully. flight schools don't charge you to sit in the airplane. Right. Um, you make great points. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Well, very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Absolutely. Hopefully, this helps you guys kind of see how Josh went through and became a private pilot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other videos we've done with other people that how they got through, how much time and money it took. So the links are in the description below. Links are in the description below too. You guys already know Josh. Maybe not. Yeah, I'm not that great. Awesome channel. Go check it out. His link's in there. Check it out. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. Thanks, let's buddy. go watch an air show. Yeah, let's go. Oh, we're just going to find this quiet spot at Oshkosh and uh, make this video, guys. It's going to be great. It's totally, it's going to work. It's going to work. And there's a break. There's another airplane in the sky. It's going to work.